transmit and receive signal models. This material comes from the appendix. So uh, before we proceed with modeling, we need to know how to represent the transmitted and received signals in passband and baseband. Baseband versus passband signals. Okay, baseband's are signals that exist in their original frequency very close to the zero uh, hertz. While, ver while band band signals are signals that are modulated shifted to a certain band. The diagram shown on the right hand side here shows a double sided spectrum and the spectrum is shifted to FC. The bandwidth 2B is usually much less than the original the band than the carrier frequency, where B is the bandwidth of the original message. Many signals in communication systems are band bass signals with bandwidth of 2B, where B, as I said, is the original spectrum. So and usually the bandwidth is centered around the carrier frequency. Usually, usually the bandwidth is much less than the carrier and we have narrow band communication. We can represent the signal in terms of two equivalent baseband signals. So we have S of T is equal to the M phase component times cosine minus SQ, which is the quadrature component times sine. We call SI the low pass baseband in phase component, and we call SQ the low pass or baseband quadrature component. U of X, U of T would be the complex low pass signal. That's to say that when we modulate a signal when it's in band bus, it's in fact two signals together because we can think of amplitude and phase. So we can we can represent two signals in our case. Remember if you recall the QM, one is modulated with cosine and one is modulated with sine, but here we have a minus sign. So in fact we have two baseband signals for one signal. So we this is why we get UT to be the complex low bass signal, a signal that represents the two together. So it's equal to the M phase component plus J is, is Q. So the low bass equivalent is being complex because we could have two signals at the same time. Now we can relate the baseband equivalent and the band bass signal by saying S of T equal to the real part of U of T times exponential. So take the complex and then modulate it so you get your signal. So if you modulate, if you you will get if you, if you take the real part of this which equal to cosine and the real part of this is going to be uh, minus sine. So this last term is exactly equivalent. Just use, you try to use Euler identity and substitute here for the exponential and show that you get exactly the same expression. That's what we call the complex low pass representation or equivalent. U of t is a complex low pass signal and S of t is a complex low pass representation. Low bass equivalent model. Using properties of Fourier transform, we can show that uh, the spectrum S of f is in fact one half times two versions shifted, and we have a complex conjugate here because of the multiplication by minus sign. Alternative representation of, of the equivalent low bass signal, we just mentioned we can have u of t equal to the shifted version of of uh, of the band of, of the band bus signal where a is the amplitude so it's skewer this is a kind of polar representation we had the cartesian representation in terms of i and sq we now can have the polar representation in terms of a and phi so that's to say a signal s of t can be represented in its cartesian low bus equivalent complex or we can also have the polar representation where in fact a signal is made of amplitude and phase when it comes to the channel, we also have an equivalent low bass channel impulse response. And we define it to be, if you take H sub L to be the low bass uh, to the baseband signal, so the low bass equivalent, so the impulse response of the channel is related to the low bass by the following relation. Remember that R E times, this is just shifting into cosine. And we are using a scalar factor just to simplify the math. Because if we don't do so, uh, our next equation will have a scale of half. So what we do here, we're going to say that the, the impulse response or the, sorry, the, the transfer function of the channel is related to its low bass equivalent by shifting uh, by twi two shifts. And this is the complex conjugate. We can show this using free transform properties. So now we can say that the received signal will be the real part of the signal 
convolved with the low bus equivalent. We can do the operation in low bus, and then we can we can shift into the frequency of interest. If you want more details about this, then please visit um, Appendix A from Andre Goldsmith textbook or any signals and systems book that has free transform properties. Now, considering the noise at the receiver side also, we all will always consider the, the noise is at the receiver side. So you can say that the received signal equal to V of T, which is this convolution, and times exponential plus noise. So HL, U of T, and V of T are low bass equivalent. That's, there is no need to specify a certain carrier. So that's given. We can define the signal to noise ratio. This is the noise and this is the signal. This is the low bass equivalent. And I'd like you to answer the following question. Try to answer in the chat section. Why low bass equivalent model? Why are we trying to use low bass equivalent model? Why don't just we use the signal at its passband? So I'll leave you with the answer. Thank you very much.